self-storage is big business and the answer to our overcrowded homes. Oh, oh gosh. Dear. Bring back some memories. Yes. <laughs> but some have taken their storage hoarding too far. It's not all mine, they're one or two else's. Uh, 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 Hanging on to things they don't see or need. It's time to save now. And it's costing them a fortune. It's over £2,000 a year. I need help. I'm in a desperate state. I'm Aggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. You're paying to store storage. I'll be asking hoarders to unlock the doors of their units. It's just crazy. Empty out their stash. You know it makes sense. I can't. And choose to either keep it. Keep to sell. No. Skip it or sell it. I despair. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden gems. Anything between 15 and 20,000. Wow. To take to auction. How did I have it? And make some hard cash. 280 then. In today's show, one hoarder confronts a lifetime laid out in boxes. <laughs> this is a radio. It's really cool. While the other battles a difference of opinions. Why don't you stop that and help me? But will any belongings come to light? You look like a lamp. <laughs> and turn into cash under the hammer. 120, 130, 140, 150. Welcome to Storage Hoarders. Today I'm helping two hoarders whose lives seem to be tied up in storage. I'm here to convince them the time is right for them to give their hoard the heave-ho when I ask them to keep it, skip it or sell it. Our first storage hoarder is festival fanatic Sharon Davis with her dad Ron. Sharon loves the sound of storage, having had her items locked away for almost a year to the tune of nearly £900. So how did she hit that note? The problem that I have with my storage is that I had a house in Newbury. I didn't ever feel like I belonged there, that it was somewhere that I really wanted to be. So my husband and I talked about moving to Brighton. I've moved to a small flat. I had to put the rest of the furniture that wouldn't fit in this flat into storage. So Sharon has now traded a suburban lifestyle for a posh pad overlooking the seaside resort of Brighton. A popular town famed for its funfair pier, Bebble Beach and thriving music scene. And music is the food of love for Sharon, who even met her husband at a festival. One of these is the wristband I was wearing when I met my husband. I think it was this one, I think. It could be any of these. <laughs> my husband is currently working in India. He's a um, civil engineer um, and he doesn't really have any stuff, which is brilliant. With Sharon's husband working away, Dad was on hand to help with her move. My dad was amazing. He helped me move everything out of the um, house into storage. But is he the right man to now help shed that storage? I'm as guilty as everybody else of hanging on to stuff. Um, I've got a massive music collection. Dad wants nothing more than to see his free-spirited daughter finally settled. I do look forward to try to get some completion, really and that Sharon is eventually settled in her little love nest up here in the sky above Brighton. Sharon needs to put an end to her storage gig so her husband can return to a clutter-free start to married life by the sea. There's absolutely no way that I want to continue to have, to have storage, none, absolutely none. And she already has plans for any cash she might make. I've got a trip planned. I'm going to India and um, with a side trip to the Maldives. So it'd be really good if this money could be put towards that. But can father and daughter stay in <laughs> tune and work as a team? Perhaps if I push you in the right direction, who knows? I may even follow. I want to help this free spirit free herself from her storage once and for all. So tell me, who's the storage hoarder here? We're both hoarders. Right. But Sharon is the storage hoarder. I hoard at home. Oh, do you? Superbly. So it's just the one unit here, is it? Just right. one unit. One unit. Is it mainly furniture? Um, no. It's um, probably a heap of embarrassing CDs, um, sort of just general bric-a-brac, but yes, quite a lot of furniture, white goods. Mm -hmm. So you said, Ron, you're a bit of a hoarder. What do you think about Sharon letting go of all her stuff? Um, I'm a bit jealous, really. Um, 
you know, I'd love to get rid of a lot of my stuff, you know. I haven't got a unit, but I've got a loft, you know, and we're all guilty of the loft it's syndrome. Just not, it's not just the loft. <laughs> it's actually all over the house. So are you hoping to clear this unit completely? I do need to clear the unit completely. I would love it to happen today. It may be that it takes a couple more months after today to actually um, give things to other people. Are you ready to face this? Yep. I am too. <laughs> Let's do it now. I really hope I can help the storage duo hit the right note and clear out that unit. Our second storage hoarder in need of my help is feisty French girl Sandra Novak, along with her friend Kashka. She's so far said au revoir to nearly £1,400 in two years. So what brings her here? I arrived in England about eight years ago now and I was living with my ex-boyfriend at the time. So when I moved in uh, Bristol, I took everything I had in France with me and when we split up uh, nearly three years ago now, I just didn't have the space, I had to find storage. Sandra currently flat shares with friends in Bristol, the city famed for its iconic suspension bridge designed by Brunel and built nearly 150 years ago. When Sandra came to England, she moved lock, stock and barrel. All my life is in a storage. I've got quite a lot of books, a few uh, bits of furniture, old toys I had when I was a kid, and um, a few things to do craft, like paint and things like that. My mum used to be collecting a lot of things, and now she's giving me <laughs> lessons, saying, you should throw this, you should throw that, and I attempt to remind her. I'm doing exactly the same thing as you did, and in a much smaller proportion, though. I, I think I could like let go of more, but it's difficult because I get really attached to all my things. This self-confessed hoarder has a real penchant for the past that knows this sentimental baggage comes at a price. For me, it's not a waste of money in the storage because there's some things I'm not ready to let go of. It's like sort of investing in my memories, if that makes sense. She may be determined to hold on, but best friend and keen support Kashka thinks now is the right time for Sandra to take stock of her storage. And especially now when she's moving in with her boyfriend sometime soon, so I think it's, it's time for like a new chapter in her life. I just want to be supportive and maybe bring some arguments which might convince her. Don't make me throw everything, yeah? No, well, I don't want you. I don't want you to throw everything away. It's just the stuff you don't need, Sandra. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, you'll feel so much better when you just let it all go. There's no way I can have all my life in a suitcase, can you? <laughs> as well as earning some cash, moving in with her boyfriend could also be a good reason to streamline the stash. We're talking with my boyfriend to moving together next year, and he's not the type of person I live with a lot of clutter around, so I'm definitely up for downsizing. So can I get Sandra to downsize that storage by thinking with her head and not her heart? Now, ladies, one of you is a hoarder. Which one is it? It's me. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> How long have you had the unit? For about a couple of years now. Couple of years? Yeah. Is there anything there that you know you'll want to hang on to that's of particular sentimental value to you? Everything is of sentimental value for me. That's why I've mm. keep it <laughs> all this time. That's the problem. I'm quite sentimental for my things, for objects. So I've got my toys from when I was a kid in oh, there and dear. things like that, you yeah. know. So all, all the books I scribble myself and things. So actually, there's a lot of stuff in there that could so easily just be skipped. No, not really. <laughs> Kashka, are you a bit of a hoarder or no. are you the opposite? I'm completely opposite. <gasps> are you here to inspire Sandra? Is yeah. that the plan? Bring some sense as <laughs> well. So what would you do with the money? Well, I was thinking to um, maybe we talk to Kasia about maybe going to Poland together. So yeah. maybe if there's enough, yeah. can buy a plane ticket for both of us and uh, <laughs> visit her family. Nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That would be nice. Right, are we ready to clear out? Yes. Ready as can be? Definitely. Come on, let's do it, girls. Let's go. <laughs> We've now met our hoarders. Next, it's time to open up their units. Coming up, Sandra finds a snapshot from her past. Look, what's my tail? Ron is ripping up the rule book. I've got a pending pile. And is there any hidden value in those hoards to make money at auction? Bye. Welcome back to Storage Orders. Earlier, we met festival fan Sharon Davis and her dad, Ron. 
she's determined to start married life clutter-free in her new flat by the sea. And sentimental Sandra Novak, who, with the help of best friend Kashka, wants to streamline her hoard of memories and recoup some of the £1,400 spent storing them so far. Later, our expert will cast their discerning eye over the stash to see if there's anything of value to take to auction. First to confront the clutter is Sharon. It's time to open the door on the hoard she's had stashed away for nearly a year. Oh, my goodness! <laughs> oh, my oh, no. lordy, lordy. Oh, no. Sharon's unit is rammed to the roof. This is this so much of it. And it's, it, it, it is, I know, I know, and it is my stuff, but it just, yeah. Time to get shifting, guys. Oh, look, there's something for the skip before we even start. <laughs> Obviously, I need this. It's a souvenir of my travels. Sharon's determined oh, to empty her unit, so it's a good job her fellow hoarder, Dad Ron, has a cunning plan. What you need is a system. <laughs> what I need is a skip. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they need is another pair of hands. Ron, what do you think of this lot? Oh, last time I saw this, it was like a Jenga block. <laughs> All the way back. Everything neat, yeah, yeah, neat. Yeah. Can you believe a daughter of yours would end up with this mess, Ron? You try and bring them up so well, <laughs> and it all falls apart once they fly the fly nest. I know. So what's this now? Is this these tickets from oh, gigs that yeah. you went to? I used to go to lots of... I still go to lots of gigs. That's why I moved down to Brighton. So this is kind of part of why I'm here, really. So we're keeping this, then, for, for the now. moment? For yes. Right. Okay. This gig girl clearly loves the music scene, but Shannon and Ron must really up the tempo if they're going to stand any chance of shaking the hoard. Now it's time for Sandra to open her unit and unlock a lifetime of memories. Oh, my God! What do you have here? <laughs> this is Sandra's life neatly packed away in a compact mountain of boxes. <laughs> This is a radio. Look, it's really cool. Why is it Sandra. Straight away, it becomes apparent this is a girl who can't let go. Sandra has held on to almost everything, right back to her childhood growing up in France. This one is a message from my best friend at the time, some of my best friends at the time. She says she's going to tell me a secret. She's uh, in love with one other guy in our class. Well, that's actually really sweet. You see my keys. So these, I keep these because well, yeah, I don't but... remember all these things, so it's good to find these things and look through. It seems all of Sandra's possessions tell a tale. This is my new Oh, my coccyx! Look, that's my tail. So this it's... is the poster box. Can I... It's a lantern, see? Very nice. Really? Come on, girls, we could be here all day at this rate. I want to take a closer look at what Sandra is refusing to part with. Um, what are we doing so far? What's all this stuff? Is so this bin? is all the posters That's I used to have. Is it? Well, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yes. Either way. Most, most of it. Most of it. Yeah, Definitely. they're all tatty. They're all tatty. OK, they're that's on. fine. It's a fan hat, yeah? And you unfold it. And you look like a lamp. <laughs> 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 OK, great start, but we need to get everything out and sort it into piles. So I'll leave you to get on with that just now. Okay. okay. Thank you. See you later. I worry Sandra is going to spend too much time reminiscing over memories rather than removing them from her unit. How cute is that? It's time to sort the trash from the treasure. I'm not sure I really put this in very well. <laughs> to help our storage hoarders, I've asked them to sort their belongings into three categories. Keep it for those items they really want to hold on to, skip it for any rubbish that's a waste of space, or sell it for the items that could recoup some cash. I've also added a charity bin for anything that's too good to throw away. Does this have a purpose? I've got like three, four bags of this. Berries. <laughs> I've arranged for some helping hands and found them the space they need to get decisive with their items. They've only got a few hours, so I want these girls to act with their minds, not with their hearts. Um, did Sharon spread is mainly a large collection of furniture and trappings from her previous house, which must all now find a new home. Oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there is quite a lot, though. 
Sandra's stash, on the other hand, is a jumble of boxes, cases, containers and bags. And in each one are a multitude of memories spanning her lifetime. The girls are going to have to think quickly and get decisive if Sandra's sentimental hoard is going to go. OK, so take your pick. This one is one of your favourites, isn't that it? That is my favourite. This is a radio I won in the shopping centre when I was about 14 years old. Really? There was only six of them to be won and there was a hundred of people trying. I love it. And I won one and I was so proud. What do you want to do with this one? As much as it saddened me, it's got to go. Sure. Yeah. Your first win for the skip pile. Don't enjoy that too much. Oh, <laughs> shame. This is, um, I've had it since I'm about two or three years old. What do you think, Ashka? Well, I think it's time to let some things go. I think I'll have Sometimes to think about it. Sometimes you just have to let it go, Sandra. <laughs> Yeah. This is my first TV. Sandra has spent her life accumulating knickknacks and souvenirs, but it just looks like cluttered chaos. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we've got in this one. So I am a child. Give down concert tickets. Signed by the artist, French artist. Dutch mark. Ten Dutch mark. I used to do that a lot when I was a kid. Just put stuff in tins and I never open them again. More clock. Probably doesn't work anymore. I think it's time to knuckle down and get serious. I'm going in. We need to get things into piles quickly and we need to be decisive about it. Why don't we just put this, this... In the middle? In the middle. <laughs> and then anything you want to extract, we can put in the keep or the cell. Sandra, what is this here? That's in the skip pile already. Well, I think this is the sort of thing that you might be able to get some money on. It's the first thing I ever won. I'll just put this over here. <laughs> Maybe that will recoup a little bit of the £1,400 spent storing this lot. Where oh. did you get this from? My mum gave it to me. I think she might have found it as well. Found it? Mm. What, in a skip? Mm. Pretty much. What a pair you are. <laughs> <laughs> Should we put it in the cell pile, see if there's any worth there? Yeah, it sounds good. So the cell pile is slowly building. What about some more of those childhood memories? Where did you get these from? I got them given by a neighbour when I was a kid to play with. Oh, right. So it was like sort of uh, what my, my, my uh, tablecloth when I used to have tea with my, uh, my toys and things when I was a That's kid, so really. Sweet. So we should show these to the experts, see Definitely, if there's any yeah, value yeah, in them. Tapestries have been made by hand since the 3rd century. Perhaps the best known example is the Bayeux tapestry measuring 70 metres wide. However, it's not officially a tapestry as it is embroidery work on cloth. To find out if Sandra's are genuine tapestries and if they have any value, I'm sending her to the nearby city of Bath to see rug specialist Katia Mysaver and Joy Pryor. A man with a Arabic headdress. On a horse. Yes. With palm trees. They've been given to me when I was a kid and I used to play with them, <laughs> which explained the different stain and state of them, unfortunately. Tapestries are made by weaving together two interlaced threads. This process was made more efficient with the development of the loom in the 18th century. Sometimes on um, handmade tapestries and rugs, you can see occasional knots. OK. But with machine-made, um, things you don't you don't really see this. I see. It's more perfect. I see. Yes. If you really have an item handmade, it's mm -hmm. a lot more valuable than having something machine made. So, do you think there is a, a market maybe for these two items? I think that, that might be fifty or seventy-five pound yes. each. You reckon? Yes. Okay. What I would do with them is make them into something that you would use. Oh, OK, yes. Be revive, you know, their use and maybe make them into cushions. Oh, you know, amazing. something like covering a cushion with uh, something like that. You know, oh, and a perfect size. Um, <laughs> you could sew it on onto a cushion and you could have it. It's oh, a very good idea. You it know. would look great. Yeah. It would look great. It does look great as a cushion, It actually. would look great. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your input today. It's very helpful. So, what does Sandra think now a little more light has been shed on her childhood gift? I actually found out a lot more about tapestry and rugs, which I didn't know. And uh, I'm quite nicely surprised to find out they're actually maybe that old and everything. So, I will carry on maybe trying to dig a little bit more, uh, finding more um, their origin and 
maybe a more precise date of where they were produced. So the tapestries are going to remain with the rest of Sandra's hoard for now. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the unit, gig girl Sharon and self-confessed hoarder Ron are getting busy with the baggage. I just don't know where to start, really. That's definitely going away. Skip. I like Skip. That's charity shop. So this is the key. They're making good progress sorting the overspill oh. hoard from Sharon's old house. But just when all seems to be going well... More music. music Ron has another music. cunning plan. What we need is a pending pile, much against my daughter's uh, wishes. And here we have the embarrassing CD collection. Oh, no, don't! Spanish. How's your Spanish lessons going, darling? Seriously, why don't you stop that and help me as opposed to just rifling through my stuff? Oh, it's lovely to have a family argument on TV, isn't it? <laughs> this family follette needs regrouping. Uh, hold on. We cannot have painting pals. I know, pals. I told him. It's not all right. Why are you having a painting pal? <laughs> uh, You're upsetting my system, Ron. <laughs> I think Ron's painting pal needs a closer inspection. Now, listen, all these CDs. Yeah. I have been through those. You have. And they've, they're down by about a third. So tell me what part music plays in your life. So I actually moved down to Brighton um, so that I could go to more gigs. In the summer, I go to, well, I went to nine festivals this year. Nine? Ten. Yeah, nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> I kind of get it from my dad. And you've inherited the musical gene, have yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. I'm just one of those guys that always likes music and I've always uh, been to concerts. So I used to go to concerts as a little kid. So I used to see all the early rock and rollers, Such Chuck as... Berry, Fats Domino, <gasps> Jerry Lee Lewis on his first tour when he got kicked yeah. out of England, that sort of Chuck thing. Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, Jerry Lee Lewis, you've seen them all play live? Indeed I have. Well, enough of the chat, guys. This pair need to rock and roll if they're going to get all of Sharon's belongings sorted into piles. Hopefully they'll find some items of value to make some cash. The clock is ticking for our storage hoarders, but there's just enough time for one final push. They've stared downsizing in the face to put a conclusion on the clutter. We've done it. High five, high five. Well done. Sharon has battled with Dad Ron's different ideas of sorting and managed to find a large selection to either skip or sell. And with the help of Kashka, Sandra has fought with her emotions and sorted her life's belongings into piles, but she still doesn't seem keen to let go. Feeling about getting rid of a lot of stuff? Um, it's a little bit of a shock, really, because you know, when you're well, on seeing things, everything here. Well, no, it's just the motion of getting rid of things. It's thinking next time I come to my storage or next time I want to get through my things, there's some things I'm not going to find anymore. And then I might think on this time, oh, where did that go? And oh, I'm actually missing that. I think you're very nervous about letting the stuff go. Yeah. But I don't think you should be. What do you think, Kasia? I totally agree with you, yeah. I hope Sandra can let go and just hold on to the precious items. Coming up, has Sharon been made an offer she simply can't refuse? I think that's a very good offer, but it's entirely up to you. And will she clean up at auction? 130, 140, 150. 32. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders, where I'm helping two lovely ladies shake down their stash by asking them to keep, skip or sell. Now I want to know if there's anything of value in their pile. I've invited expert Paul Hayes, who has been dealing in the world of antiques for over 10 years, to see if he can spot any gold from the glitter. So what will he make of Sharon's hearty hoard of sale items? We'll start with your, your older bits and pieces here. We have a, an almost complete dressing table set yeah. here. We've got two little silver top bottles with glass uh, bottoms. Yeah. And of course, a little uh, oblong box here and two little cream bottles there. Now, these are all yeah. solid silver tops. And oh. People love to collect these. Uh, the only snag is someone's over-polished them. And what happens when you over-polish them? That wasn't me. You all get holes in. Can you <laughs> see that? Clearly wasn't me. OK. Uh, but they are silver and they do date from about 1900, 1905. Oh, wow. But okay. people collect them just for novelty yeah. value. Really. Yeah. Very, very intricate little things. Yeah. Uh, so that's one little lot you could put through an auction, maybe sort of 20, 30 pounds. Okay. I think so they could do all right. Yep, that'd be good. And then you've got some pottery from the 1960s here. The market now has gone for this 1950s, 60s sort of kitsch. Retro look, if you mm -hmm. like. So there is a market for these. It's a nice little dinner set, 20, 30 pounds. It gives someone a chance to, to actually, um, you know, to come along and bid for them and for them okay. to do well. 
That's all really interesting, but what about the sofas? It was this very, very expensive, wouldn't you? Yeah, it was. <sighs> OK. Well, I think if this went to auction with an estimate, £100 and £150, pounds, okay. and I think on the day you might get two people who want it. Yeah. Or eyes, you might get a little bit more, but that's a realistic sort of guide. Okay. And I think a little bit more for your leather setting. This is really okay. retro. Now, this one has a sort of a 70s look. Yeah. Which I quite a bit like myself, you know. <laughs> it's, it's the sort of thing that people okay. love to see, you know, yeah. it's 90s of the 70s. Okay. Bright red, it's retro, yeah. it's sort of kitsch, even though it's a sort of newish piece. So I think this has got every chance of bringing, you know, three or four hundred pounds. Every really? chance of that. Yes. Okay, excellent. But I would like to see it with an estimate 150 to 200. Okay, to give that's it a fine. chance. Is that all right? Yep, fine. All right. And then you've got a nice old mirror here, which is, is tucked away. It looks great from this angle. <laughs> a bit like myself. I always find I look better from behind the mirror rather than thinking. Uh, but this has been made from reclaimed timber. It has that sort of rustic look. It's very yeah. popular, actually, at the moment. Yeah. 30 to 50 pounds all day long, and yeah. I think you could do quite well with that okay, one, actually. Fine. All right. So the items Paul suggests go to auction are. The rather funky red leather sofa, valued at 150 to 200 pounds. The flower pattern sofa, valued at 100 to 150 pounds. The kitsch dinner service collection, estimated at 20 to 30 pounds. A set of silver trinkets, also with an estimate of 20 to 30 pounds. And Paul suggests the reclaimed wood mirror should go to auction with an estimate of 30 to 50 pounds. But it's the wine decanter crystalware from Grandma's old suitcase that's really caught Paul's eye. Well, these are cut crystal, uh, and yeah. they're cut glass, lead crystal. And yeah. they use lead because it gives a great uh, iridescence, yeah. a great sort of transparency yeah. to, to the actual lead. This is genuine cut crystal because it cuts your fingers almost when you actually just rub the. Have you rubbed that? Yeah. Very, very sharp. Can you see that? Okay, so that means that's been done by hand, it's not a machine right. oh, moulded. Right. Okay. So this has been the handmade yeah. items yeah. from about 1920. That sort of time. God, I didn't right. it. And on the top here, it has a hallmark. Can you see yeah, that? yeah. And that tells me it's made about 1916, 1920, that sort of time. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. That's worth maybe 50 to 80 pounds on Brilliant. its own. To find out more about the fine crystal wear, I've sent Paul and Sharon to the quaint lanes area of Brighton to see specialist Livia Brennan. She'll be able to tell us more about Sharon's items and reveal their potential value. Do these have a specific use? I mean, are they for a certain... I mean, this is, is this a claret jug? That's take? a claret right. jug, obviously, originally from France, French, French word. Um, and they had to... The wine obviously came in big caskets and they had to decant it into something to then serve it. That's right. Um, and actually, it was the English in the, sort of the mid-1700s that introduced stoppers to the tops of things to save it from going off. The French obviously drank it too quickly. <laughs> to, to worry about that. Lead crystal is made from glass that has been treated with lead oxide and hand or machine cut to make facets. This gives the glass an attractive sparkling effect that is prized throughout the world. Lead crystal pieces are popular gifts for weddings and anniversaries and are often passed from generation to generation. So, are Sharon's handed down pieces special in any way? What are you looking for first? What would I be looking at? Well, obviously it's nice because it's got the silver top. I want to be looking, although it's dirty, for the silver mark. And I think you've just said it's 19... 1916, that's what I get it to, it's a little Birmingham R. Eyes are much, much better than mine. Right, you can check so, that out. So the wear and tear on these are generally the stoppers. You want to be looking round the top here mm -hmm. to see whether, when they get put back yeah. in after you've had a few glasses, whether they've got knocked. Again, in the collar here, whether that's been knocked. OK. Is that a common thing to do with... Yeah. ...gets rammed in too yeah. hard? Then. And then you want to check the overall condition of the decanter itself. Yeah, it's nice and crisp. Mm. And if you want to check the whole market, you can, but I think I've got it. It's a, it's a Birmingham R on a... Um, but it's, it is a little bit rubbed on the corner. It is, yeah, slightly rubbed. Again, oh, for retail, people like the crisp marks. Mm. Yes. And that's the wonder of silver, is you can actually date it and see when it's from. Yeah. It sounds like Sharon has some good examples, but good enough for Olivia to make an offer? £300 for the lot. Well, that's entirely up to you, Sharon. It's worth a th look, isn't it? I think that's a very good offer. But it's entirely up to you. It's a deal. Well, <laughs> you're right. There we are. It doesn't take much thinking about. I think that's really generous, and I think we've landed at the no, right place. No, I think we have. No, I Thank feel you. like this is where they should be, and I think they will get sold to people who will use them. Yeah. £300 for a few pieces of crystal wear should certainly put a sparkle in Sharon's eye. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that's £300. So that's 100 for me, 100 for my brother and 100 for my mum and dad. So I think my nan would be really pleased and I think that um, whoever buys them will love them.
We've now come to the auction rooms in London to see if Sharon can sell the rest of her items to release her from clutter and make some more cash to put towards that trip to India. So, are you hoping to sell everything today? I'd love to sell everything today. Right. And do you have reserves on any of your items? Yes, they've all got the sort of lower end of the okay. estimate reserve on them. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the items are only reserve at 20 anyway, and okay. the sofas are £100. Yes. And they're, they're sort of pretty much mint condition, so yes. that's a good buy for somebody. Yes. Excellent. And um, how much are you hoping to make today? It would be really nice if I could have another £300. <laughs> <laughs> You're liking your £300 I'm lots. liking my £300, yes. <laughs> what would you do with that money? OK, so I'm planning a trip to India, ah. so I can bring my husband home yes. to Brighton. Yes. So um, that would be some extra spending money, I guess. Yes. Time for the auction to begin. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you. With Sharon Slots about to go under the hammer, there's just time to find out what auctioneer William Rouse thinks of them. Sharon's got a modern red leather sofa and a purple sofa. Well, I'm, I think those two will do fine as it happens. Uh, the cosmetic jars uh, have got silver tops, and at the moment anything with silver on the top is, is good news. Um, even if it does just end up being scrapped, people will always buy silver, so I'm sure that will sell. OK, well, let's see how the items fare as the auction is about to begin, starting with the red leather sofa, which Paul valued at 150 to £200. Are you excited? I'm a bit nervous now. I know, I know it is. I want them to sell. £50 for this sofa. 50, I'm bid 55, 60, 65. Red leather sofa for £65. Not quite enough, I'm afraid. With me then at £65. No, no more. 65. No bids, I'm afraid. Sorry. Not sold and not a good start. Let's see if the leaf pattern sofa has more appeal to the bidders with its estimate of 100 to 150 pounds. Me at 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 110, 120, 130, yes. 140, 150, 150 I'm bid at 150 pounds for the, for the purple yeah, sofa. Know, 150, know. you all done 150 then. <clears throat> OK, 150 Happy with that? Yeah, good. £150 is bang on the top estimate. Next up, it's the retro kitchen dinner service, which Paul thought would attract interest around £20 to £30. £10 a lot, please, for the dinner service. Anybody want the lot for £10? £8, then. You're bidding £8 there. Anybody else then at £8 in the middle of the room, then £8 I'm going to sell it. £193. Mm, OK. £8, a bargain for someone, but not great for Sharon. However, the midder did rack up a sale of £30, which just leaves the silver top trinket boxes. Will the bidders be tempted? A little bit of silver there, and uh, £10 a lot for the silver. For a £10 note, surely, 10 I'm bid standing, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. There's two people scared when there's two people. Yeah. 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 Particularly when they're they can't bear to let the other one have it. 30, 32. 32 pounds, then nearer to me at 32. Are you all done? 32 pounds. Excellent. Oh, total up at the so, that's all right. Are you happy with that lot? Apart from the red leather sofa, everything went, so that's good. Well, 32 pounds is a good way to end the day, and the final lot is sold. So, everything did really well. It's only the sofa that didn't seem to generate much interest, which is a shame because it's such a beautiful thing. I know, I love that sofa and it's a shame it didn't sell, mm -hmm. but um, I've actually now got rid of my storage unit. You've got rid I've, completely yep. and utterly? Completely empty. That is a result. So after commission, Sharon made just over £200 at auction. She also had some luck with the sale of those lovely crystal decanters for a whopping £300. And now Sharon has closed down her unit, she can add a further £1,320 to her total, which means she is now clutter-free and over £1,800 better off. So how is she going to spend all that lovely cash? So that will pay for my plane ticket to India. Excellent. Yeah. I like it. So, mission complete for Sharon. She's cleared out her unit and made some cash to pay for that trip to India to meet up with her husband. Coming up, something has got Paul revved up. This is great. Plastic. I love it. I love it, though. It's really funky, isn't it? And there's a surprise in store at auction. It is so exciting, isn't it? Welcome back to Storage Orders. 
Earlier, we met festival fanatic Sharon Davis. Having relocated to a posh pad by the sea, the overspill furniture from her previous house found a new home in storage. She pulled off a great gig by clearing out her unit and is now putting the spare cash towards a holiday in the sun with her husband. It's now time to catch up with self-confessed hoarder Sandra. She spent nearly £1,400 storing a lifetime of memories. I've had it since I'm about two or three years old. But best friend Kashka thinks now is the time to cut the sentimental ties from her hoard and move on. Antiques expert Paul Hayes has had a good look through the contents of Sandra's belongings. So, what are his thoughts? Very musical, I think. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, that good. Yeah, That's you've got some great things. I mean, you, you, can we start with this piano first? Look at that, a real miniature piano. It is. I cool. quite like that, and there are lots of collectors for toys. You've got people that collect pianos. It'd make a nice Christmas present for somebody, wouldn't mm. it, I think? So, mm -hmm. if that could go to auction, I think, you know, 10 or 20 pounds is a little, little novelty, really, a bit mm -hmm. of fun, you know? And what about the pink Cadillac Sandra was going to send to the scrap heap? We've got a pink Cadillac. <laughs> you know what, Aggie, when you said you've got to find a pink Cadillac, I thought, oh, it's so exciting. In the storage, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what, this is Real great. Classic. I love it, I love it, though. It's really funky, isn't it? Yeah. 1980s or 90s? Uh, or yeah, I think it was about 10, 12, so, yeah, like, sort of um, 90s. I would love that. It's so iconic. Anybody that's interested in <laughs> the 1950s, into rock and roll, the pink Cadillac, the mm. 59 Cadillac, if you want to be a real animal, yeah. that's the shape of the back mm -hmm. end here. Uh, they actually have the real ones out in America. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have them made into settees and things like that if yeah. you want to be part of the car. Yeah. And uh, I think that's worth at least 20, 30 pounds all day. Oh, really? Long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How does that sound? Amazing. <laughs> I thought was going to get a fiver. Better than putting it on the skip. Hey, I was going to put it on the skip, yeah, actually, right. so it's good. Now, I was nice. expecting to find something French here today. <laughs> now, tell me, tell me about these little things here. These are lovely. Um, these were also rescued by my mum. I don't really know where from. I don't know the story of these. Um, right. But they're quite old, I think. Mm. They are. They're Limoges. Mm. Well, they developed a, a soft paste porcelain. It's, it, people find it very attractive. It's, it's a lovely sort of finish to the item. Mm -hmm. uh, these will date maybe 1920, 1930, oh, really? so they're quite old. And this one would have had a real use. I mean, going back to the 18th century, these little boxes were patch boxes. You know what patch boxes? No. Well, when the, the gentlemen and the ladies used to wear very white makeup, okay. they would have a beauty <gasps> spot. Oh, yes. And they yeah. put a patch, they call it a little patch. We call box. it a mouche in uh, French. Uh huh. Big, uh -huh. Black, yeah. There mouche. we go, a mouche. Mm -hmm. That's and what it's that's called. a little mouche box. Little mouche Which box. means fly, like having a fly on Oh, really? So I think. You could have up to fifty pounds here, sort of thirty really? to Ooh, sixty pounds okay. as a little parcel. Does that sound Ooh, all right to you, then? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And this clock? Oh, the clock's quite nice. That nineteen thirties. That it's it, gorgeous. Yeah. I think it's, it's so really cute. cute. Yeah. But it's quite stylish. It's bakelite, it's copper. It's beautiful, it's yeah. so cute. So that may be 25, 30 pounds, you know, mm. uh, even though it's not working somewhere. Okay. The items Paul thinks Sandra should take to auction are. The miniature toy piano estimated at 10 to 20 pounds. The pink Cadillac stereo, which she thinks will spark interest around 20 to 30 pounds. The Limoges collection estimated at 30 to 60 pounds. And the Bakelite clock, which could bring in around 25 to 30 pounds. Paul also suggests a matching set of six glasses to go to auction with a guide of five to 10 pounds, along with a pair of candlesticks also valued at five to 10 pounds. But there's one item in particular that's really struck a chord with Paul. Uh, but we have a serious instrument here as well. I believe it's a mandolin. I'm not really mandolin, yeah. an expert in these fields. But what mm -hmm. I can tell you, it's a very good maker. Harmony's a really mm -hmm. good maker. This one dates maybe 1930s, 1940s. It's quite an old piece. Mm -hmm. This is tortoise shell. It's oh. in lovely condition. It has like a sunburst design. Okay. Now, this would be an expensive instrument when it was being made. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do, if it's OK with you, is to pop this along to uh, somebody who specialises in this type of instrument. Please do. I think you could do all right with this. I think that's a good idea, so I'm sending Sandra and Paul off to meet mandolin muso marvel Dave Griffiths to find out more about her passed down piece and to see if it's worth selling. Now, I must admit, the mandolin I'm used to seeing are these sort of bowl-backed type, that sort of... Uh... Which is the kind of mandolin that most people associate with the, with the, the word mandolin, is the bowl back mandolin, the classical bowl back shape. Right. Um, but there are different kinds of mandolins, and I'm hoping we're going to be able to well, see a different one now. We've certainly got a, a <laughs> so flat back one, very similar to what you've got there, actually. Mandolins evolved in Italy during the 17th and 18th centuries. This wooden instrument is a member of the lute family, which are normally plucked or strummed. 
They come in many shapes but are generally of a round or teardrop design, with most today being made flat-backed. I think you've got a playable instrument, uh, very, very definitely. Um, it's in, it seems to be in good condition, there's no cracks, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no neck crack as far as I can see there. My feeling is that it could be um, round about sort of um, 1950s, it could be earlier. Okay. Antique and vintage mandolins are very collectible depending on who made them and when. Some classic makes have been known to sell for over £60,000, but for many they are simply loved for their distinctive sound. Traditional sound that most people associate with a mandolin is the tremolo. <laughs> but I tend to play blues on this one. Sandra's hand-me-down mandolin needs a bit of TLC before it can make a tune like that again. But does it have potential value? I'm afraid it's not fantastically um, valuable. You may get as little as, uh, as £50 for it. I've seen uh, them, these going uh, for probably around about uh, £200 um, in good condition. Okay. So now Sandra knows its worth, what will she be tempted to do? I'm questioning whether or not to uh, maybe take a few lessons with David and see how it works with me. And if I like it, I would probably then keep it. While Sandra decides what to do about her old mandolin, it's time to see if the rest of her items hit the right note when they go under the hammer at auction. Any idea how much you hope to make today? Well, I uh, put a reserve price on my six items, so if I meet the reserve price, I'm going to make £100. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully more than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> yes. Are you excited? Yes, definitely. I never um, went to auctions before, so it's like all new. It's quite nice to be here. So the auction's about to begin. Best of luck. Thank you. Sandra's excited about today, but does auctioneer William Rouse think she'll have luck with her lots? Uh, with Sandra's lots, uh, there is no one individual lot which is of any great value. I think the highest estimate is 30 to 50, which isn't really a huge amount by anybody's standards. But um, there are a couple of things which are quite sort of entertaining. We've got the pink Cadillac. And I've noticed during the viewing that that little toy piano has had people walking past it, playing it. So uh, that's probably quite good news. It's a bit of fun. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything that's going to make a fortune, but they're, they're all probably going to sell. He's sounding positive. Let's see if he's right. First up is that little toy piano that Paul thought would hit the right note at 10 to 20 pounds. Five pounds, six pounds, six pounds there, at six pounds, seven pounds, eight pounds, eight pounds to my right then, anybody else at eight pounds, nine pounds, 10 pounds, 12 pounds, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20 pounds then to my left at 20 pounds, anybody else, 20 pounds. Wow, that's good. That's great. That's good, yeah. £20 hits the high notes of Paul's estimate, and that's a good start. Next up, it's time for the Bakelite clock, valued around £25 to £30. 12, 40, 60, 80, 20, 22. 22 pounds here at 22. At £22, you all done finished. 22. 193. That's good. Isn't You're doing it? very well. £22 is another item sold and more cash in Sandra's kitty. Sadly, the collection of Limoges pieces didn't reach their reserve of £30. The glasses did manage to sell for a lowly £4 and the candlesticks failed to light up the bidding but did part company with Sandra for a measly £2. So finally, it's the pink Cadillac stereo Sandra was going to skip but Paul thought someone would pay between £20 and £30. Let's see if he's right. 1980s novelty radio cassette player, lot oh, 178. There we go. Is it worth £10 for this lot, please? 10 I'm bid, thank you. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, yes, 35, so 28, so 30, so 32, 35, 38, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 55, 70, <laughs> In the puffer jacket at £75, 219. That's amazing. £75 quid for something you're going to throw on the skip. Plastic, yeah. Well, who would have thought? And what a surprising way to end the day. £75 it just goes to show 
yes. isn't it? Exactly. Do you think this will spur you on to selling more of your stuff? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about it now because seeing all the radio went, I'm thinking maybe I've got all the items <laughs> that I think are not worth anything. Yes. That I'm actually a bit surprised about now. Uh -huh. So I definitely, when I'm going to finally empty the storage and put things in the skip pile, yes. I'm going to reconsider it for maybe the yes. selling pile of it again. Yes. After commission, Sandra made £113.16 from the auction. And now she's got the decluttering bug. If she does clean up and clear out her unit, she'll be more than £650 better off each year. So with the money that you've made today, what are you going to put it towards? Well, it's still going to be uh, hopefully towards the holiday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and do something with my friend Kashka and mm -hmm. maybe it's just going to be a weekend in England mm -hmm. somewhere. <laughs> but it's still money to be spent, like mm. pocket money or something, mm -hmm. towards the holiday. All being well, Sandra will soon be clutter-free and she can treat her friend Kashka to that short break. Once again, we've rummaged through the contents of forgotten storage units and made some money along the way. Don't forget to join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders. <laughs>